my men, Sir Andrew said. A little I'm hurt, but not yet slain. I'll just lie down and bleed a while. Then I'll rise and fight again. I'm talking about fighting it! You're good! I'm talking about from the bottom of your feet! I'm talking about deep blood in your eye! And it hurts! I'm talking about straight for that logo on the side of your helmet and not the name on your back! Hi and hello, football fans, and welcome to the NFL Basement, a Buffalo Fanatics podcast. I am Adam Nanini, and today I'm going to be doing something different than we normally do. I will not be joined by my co-host, Nate Asper. Um, I'm going to be showing an interview I did last December. Um, now, this interview was with Pancho Villa, um, or Ezra Castro, Uh and I had been writing up a piece for him, uh, and I did an audio interview with him uh, for a magazine I was writing for at the time. And he had said I could use the audio, um, but unfortunately, after I did this uh, interview, I came down with some pretty severe health issues, and it never got released. So, since this week is... Um, Pancho Bia week in Buffalo for our home opener. I d decided I wanted to share this with you guys so you guys could see a little more about um, the man, Ezra Castro, and who he is. And I'll tell you, you know, it was a really special experience for me getting to interview him and talk to him. He was one of the most inspiring and sweet, wonderful people I've ever talked to. And it's amazing to me how... He used his time of um, trouble, his time of illness, you know, to help others. And in this interview, you'll get a sense of that, how, how many people he touches, how many people he inspires and helps. And it's so sad for me to re-listen to this and difficult, but in the same way, it reminds me of the good that Pancho gave to us and to me and how much he pushed me um, through his own life to be a better person and to um, how to think about the Bills. I mean, he, he really, he's a man who brought an entire community together um, in so many ways. And he's not the kind of guy that Hollywood makes films about, but he should be. Um, we need more Ezra Castros in the world, and I certainly miss him. I think about him all the time. And um, so here's an interview. You'll get to learn some things about him, uh, about, you know, uh, his fandom, his favorite players, his, you know, theories on the game, some of his history, stuff maybe you haven't heard before. Um, I know I learned a lot in this interview, and he was so generous to me. Basically, he whatever it took to get his message out, uh, he was he was open for and uh, his generosity and kindness I it, it was amazing to me. So, without further ado, here is my interview from last December with Ezra Castro, aka Pancho Villa. I hope you guys like it, and I hope you guys are moved by him and his words as much as I was. Thanks. So, uh, man, I can't tell you how excited I am. I, I was telling some of my uh, Buffalo Bills uh, friends, uh, fan friends, that uh, I was interviewing you today, and man, they were so jealous. I can't tell you. Like, uh, really? it's oh, awesome. Man. So, yeah. man, well, no, pleasure's all mine, man. Yeah, oh. my time is yours, dude. I, I did the homework with the son, and I was like, darn. I was like, I got this interview coming up, so, but I'm, I'm good, man. Hey, it's cool, man. We we it's working out fine. It's no no big deal to me. I got nothing going on tonight, so All right. I was I was just working on another post, uh, so it was uh, totally fine with me. Uh, but yeah. listen, um, so here here's how it's gonna work. I have ten questions for you, and um, All right. and so basically, you know, I I have to transcribe this, so uh, don't be terse, but essentially realize, you know, like uh, try to. Keep your question, your answers not short, but um, let's say uh, compact as if possible. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I I'll keep them as as simple as as can be. Get straight to the answer for sure. 
I got I got to ask you before we start the interview though, uh, Ezra. Like, do you do your friends call you Poncho, like, or do they call you Ezra? Like, what do you get called? <laughs> so here's the thing: when in Dallas, I get called Ezra. In Buffalo, it's Poncho. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's you know I'm the I'm the president of the DFW Bills backers here in Dallas, Fort Worth. And I've, I've been the president there for since 2015. Been a member since 2001. And everybody there knows me as Ezra. So, you know, they, they, I would say maybe about 5% of the club, which is about 600 active members, um, 5% calls me Poncho. The other people, they call me Ezra and they, they've told me like, no, you're Ezra to us. You know, that's, that's who we know you as. So, um, th that's why I say, you know, Dallas, Ezra and up in Buffalo, everywhere else I go to, it's Poncho. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, man, you have such a, a great and inspiring story. You, you know, I got to tell you before we get started, just, you know, you, you've moved so many people, you know, I was watching the past uh, week or so I've been, you know, in preparing for talking to you, I've been watching every interview you've had or just people talking about you and, yeah. you know, yeah. so many, so many people were so moved by your story. And I got to tell you, you know, you're a hero to so many of us. And that's why I was so excited to talk to you, man. So man, well, I appreciate that. And I trust me, I thank the good Lord every night, man. I do. Trust All right. Me. All right, man. Are you, are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so question number one, this is, you know, I hate to do this, but we got to get this out of the way. And everybody in Buffalo wants to know, just can you, could you update us on how you're doing? Like, what's, what's the story with your health? I mean, is, would you be willing to share that with us? Yeah, of course. I'm real open about it. And, uh, so um, as of late, I'm on uh, plan number three out of five that my doctor initially gave me a year ago. Uh, plan one and two stopped working as far as chemo treatments. Mm -hmm. And um, so I started plan number three two, week, two and a half weeks ago. Um, the first chemo session really knocked me out. And the doctor told me that, you know, he, he's finally going to, you know, th this one's really going to knock me out. And, and mm -hmm. it did. Uh, put me in the hospital actually for two days. I didn't go public about that. So oh wow! The first time that that everybody's hearing about it. But I was in the hospital for two days. Um, I was severely dehydrated. I was um, really bad nausea. Um, I, I just couldn't take it no more. So mm -hmm. at halftime between the the game of the Rams and the Chiefs uh, mm -hmm. last Monday nights ago, I said I I gotta go to the hospital. I can't do it no more. And so. Um, I was there for two days. I was able to spend Thanksgiving at home. And, uh, but yeah, it really took me out. And so, uh, it took me a while to recover from that. I just had chemo treatment, uh, this past Tuesday, which was six days ago mm -hmm. and still feeling the effects of it today. Wow. Uh, yeah. It's, um, I, I've been reading up more on it and it's called full, full fury is a type of medicine that I'm on. And it's a obviously a special chemo treatment that um, it has a delayed effect on on my body, so I won't feel it as uh, well. I do feel it as it's getting administered to my uh, to my body, mm -hmm. but um, once I'm disconnected at home, I feel it about a day or two later is when the medicine really starts kicking in. And so uh, yeah, I've I've had some nausea. I've had some severe weakness. I mean, I'm I'm like hibernating like a bear. Uh, oh sleeping. boy. Sleeping 16 hours a day, um, so, no appetite, I mean, and losing some weight. Oh, really? I mean, like, yeah. boy. I mean, is do they? Is your doctor? You said you mentioned three out of five. Is your doctor pretty hopeful? This is uh, this may work. This particular regime. Well, I mean, it sounds sounds like it's a much harsher regime. Like, yeah, like more, it more aggressive. It is. It's more aggressive, and he told me that you know that it's gonna be the most aggressive he's he's put on me yet, and. Um, Here's the thing is, and again, I'm real open about it. Uh, when I got diagnosed last year, the doctor told me that there's no, uh, there's obviously no cure for the type of cancer I have. Mm -hmm. And more important, there's no remission for it either. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much is, you know, stabilizing what I've got growth inside me and um, keeping it at a minimum. And, um, you know, I'm going to have chemo treatment for the rest of my life. I'm going to be on some type of treatment. And I, uh, I did I not know that. Good. That's that's insane. Yeah, yeah I, I may get breaks here and there, but um, you know, they, they won't be no more than a month or two month breaks of uh, some type of treatment because 
it spreads so much that you know they don't want to they don't want it to further spread and you know if i take a five or six month break i mean i can go back for a scan and it'd be all over and i'd, I'd be done you know so, so wow that's well you know thank you for, for updating that's a lot of information and it's it's so yeah. important because i feel like so many people don't even know like i didn't know that there was cancer that yeah. didn't have remission so the Thank you for sharing your story because I feel like so many people can identify with that or know people like that. And so, I mean, what you're doing, I think, is is bigger than, you know, I'm sure you realize that you have a huge impact. But uh, I, I got to tell you, this is uh, it's really important and I, I really yeah. appreciate it, man. And it was you- uh, it was a tough pill to swallow. But, you know, I said, well, that's just, um, you know, I'm young. I'm, I'm only thirty nine. Mm hmm. And I was in great shape. I never smoked. I never drank. Um, I never did any recreational drugs. I worked out six days a week. And so, you know, it was a tough pill to swallow when I was diagnosed. And here I thought I was a, one of the healthiest guys alive. And, you, yeah. know, you know, then they tell me that, you know, there's no remission, no cure. And, you know, my time's limited. I got two to three years. And I'm like, what? And, uh, you know, it's just... Uh, it is what it is. So that that's why I live life to the fullest every day, man. I, yes, I sir. No, and, uh, I mean, I, the other thing too is, you know, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a mortician by life. That's what I do right. for a living. So I, I know that life can be taken at any moment. And, mm-hmm. you know, that, so I've always cherished life and, you know, that aspect. So, you know, nothing really changed that way. It just made me appreciate little things that I never really appreciated so much. Um, but, um, yeah, that's, that's where, that's what it is. And, uh, I'm, I'm here to just live as long as I can and take as much as I can of this treatment. And, you know, I can't, uh, I can't beat, you know, God's will, but, you know, yeah. I can definitely try and beat uh, cancer. So, well, uh, well, I'll we'll, tell you, I'll tell uh, you, Ezra, there's, there's, uh, there is a, a whole swell of people out there praying for you. And, you know, we, uh, we're with you, man, like as much as we can do. And, and I'll tell you, like, uh, you are an inspiration to us all, and I, I, I really think uh, I don't know. I've, I've got a lot of hope, and I'm, a, I, um, but I guess uh, connected with that, I'm curious. Um, did you ever have a conversation uh, with Jim Kelly as you've been dealing with this? Because I know you know he's been dealing with cancer as well. I know it's a different type, but is this something yeah. you've had with him? Um, no, and you know it's funny. You're like the the third or fourth person that asked me that, and Jim Jim has not reached out to me, and I'm totally fine with it because I mean I'm I'm sure that guy is a busy guy, you know, on top of what he's already battling, and I mean it, it's um it, I am I'm totally fine with it. His wife has tweeted at me a few mm-hmm. times, you know, saying that they're praying for me as a family, and you know they think about me often. Um, and, and that just warms my heart, you know, just, just even a simple tweet, you know, um, but no, Jim, Jim hasn't reached out. And, um, but like I said, no hard feelings. I, I totally understand. I mean, there's, sure. uh, there's a lot of people in the bills organization and, and writers and, and everybody else that, you know, is sort of filling in the shoes that, you know, for him in that aspect. Um, so I, I'm totally fine with it. And, um, I pray for him daily and, and I know he just had a surgery and I was praying for him that night too. And, um, like I said, I know he's a busy guy and especially in the holiday season too, you know, I can imagine he's, he's swamped and, um, but you know, if he calls me, uh, trust me, I answer every unknown number now because <laughs> you never know, <laughs> you, know how, you know, especially a, a seven, if it says seven, one, six, I'm answering oh. it for sure. Oh yeah. man. That's hilarious. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's, you never oh, know. I never know now who's going to answer. I mean, I'll take all the scam calls I can take, you know. I mean, that that one call could be him. It could be somebody else. It could be, you know, Bruce Smith or whoever. I mean, yeah, I you saw know, you got a you got a signed uh, like a, a note from Bruce Smith in one of your interviews. I mean, I know he's a quiet yeah. guy and that that's that's pretty awesome. I mean, like uh man, that that was a huge surprise. Uh the quick story on that my a friend of mine here in dallas uh knows bruce smith personally oh. and uh yeah I, he he surprised me with that and um it was so cool i was like wow do you know how hard it is to get bruce to sign anything and and he's like i i pulled some big strings for you man so i was like dude this this is awesome and so i i show, i display it proudly because yeah that that means a lot from him to do that too 
Oh yeah, I mean, and I mean, yeah, that's that's amazing. And I, you know, I've I've gotten a chance to see how much the Bills family has surrounded you. So it's it's really inspiring to see this community come together. And you are the touchstone. And I think it's such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, so here's a, a more light, a light question for you, a lighter. Um, and I've, I've heard your story about why you chose the Bills in terms of the color scheme. You wanted red, white, and green originally, but you ended up going with red, white, and blue. Um, but why did you? Why, why exactly did you model your super fan character on Pancho Villa? And uh, the follow-up to that is, you know, I, I had read you were a mortician, and uh, did you ever think about doing something like a Day of the Dead theme, like, you know, with the skull and all that stuff? Like, I was... <laughs> No, I, I, I never did think of a Day of the Dead theme. Never did. Um, I grew up a huge wrestling fan. Oh, um, okay. still, to, still to this day, um, I watch WWE. Um, you know, I always watch uh, Lucha Libre, uh, mm-hmm. the Mexican wrestling, so... That's that's the ideal of where the mask came from. Um, you know, of course, you know, I, I got at a swap meet down in my hometown, El Paso, and I started wearing it. And that's how the whole Pancho Villa thing started. But uh, Pancho Villa, the Mexican general, um, mm-hmm. I had a key holder that held my car keys at home and it had his picture on it and his name. And I just it just dawned on me one day, you know, I dropped a V and I put a B for okay. Villa. Yeah, and it's just like, man, you know, Pancho Billa. I was like, <laughs> dude, that's like two words. It's catchy. It's it's Bill Billa. You know, I was like, I mean, dude, it, I was like, that's it. So I immediately called my buddy Klein, and uh, who's a member of the Backers Club here, and he loved it. And I was like, dude, I'm rolling with it, and it just it it caught on, and everybody, you know, loved the name Pancho Billa, and uh, um, just started calling myself that, and you know, I sort of based my character Pancho Villa around my Hispanic background. Obviously, yeah. I guess the, the Mexican mask, um, the sombrero. Um, and then, oh, it's uh, great! It's, it's a great. Yeah. I mean, I can't think of a better super fan right now. It's it's so <laughs> good. Know. I've got about eight sombreros and about nine luchador masks that I've worn throughout the years. Oh um, boy! So, yeah, but well, not all those all the sombreros, but the masks I definitely wore them at least to one game. And I, I, the luchador mask started picking up more and more in the NFL. So I said, you know, I got to make a custom one that will be different from everybody else's. Mm. And that's where I, I designed my own mask, had it custom made. And, you know, now the mask has become like the, the iconic thing about my character, you know, and um, which is cool because I love my mask. And it, uh, it is awesome, dude. Like, and <laughs> you is. straight up, you straight up look like you could be a luchador. You know, you got the, right? the arms for it and everything. I'm like, I'm like, man, yeah. you could go. The Pancho Villa, you know, always wore armbands, and that's mm-hmm. where I got that idea from. And of course, in in Spanish, the the bullet holster is called the carrilla, mm. and so I had that custom made as well, and that took two years to make. Um, but I finally had it made and it was a, a surprise Christmas gift for my girlfriend one year. And she, she finally pushed the guy to finish it. And, uh, so I started wearing it and it was like, man, that, that finalized poncho. I mean, I, I, I don't, I didn't want to add anything more cause it takes forever to get dressed and pack. I had to <laughs> buy a special suitcase to travel and then, you know, it's just like, no, that's it. The character's done. And oh, it's perfect. Don't touch it, man. Like yeah. it's so good. Oh, it's don't, and don't. and I love. And by the way, kudos to your girlfriend. That's that's a that's a good girl you got there. Yeah, yeah. support she, you. Yeah, she knew how bad I wanted it done, and she really pushed the guy. And it was a surprise kiss, Christmas gift. And uh, I've been wearing it since, man. So it, it's a it's a cool outfit. It, it's not fun going through security at football games because it always buzzes. Oh, There's a lot okay. of on it, but uh-huh. I never take it off. I just say, just search me. You know, I'm I'm fine with it. You could pull me to the side, whatever you got to do. <laughs> well, I, I imagine at a at you know the Bill Stadium, you're probably they probably know you now. Like, uh, you probably don't get too much harassment. Yeah. Oh, not not at not at not at, not at New Era Field anymore. No, it, it's uh, it, I walk in with the breeze, but I still out of respect for security. I still take my mask off and and you know my sombrero. Um, just so they can at least see my face, you know, and because sure. I'm sure they've got cameras that, you know, go through security. So I, I want at least my face to be seen. And um, but yeah, I, I guess the, the hardest stadium I've had trouble getting through was probably Seattle. 
Mm-hmm. I had a really hard time getting through that. And StubHub um, for the Chargers game a few years, uh, two years ago. Last year I got, it was last year I went to LA. They, they gave me a really hard time about the mask there. But, um, you know, you mm-hmm. just respect the authority and do what they say. And, you know, you'll, you'll get through. So it took oh, a while man. though. Well, uh, well, Ezra, you like me. I mean, I've been a Bills fan for uh, since I was well, about 1987. I was a Bills fan. Um, we're similar in age, and um, so you've been a Bills fan for a long time. And so I'm curious. Just I want to tap some of your football knowledge here, and or your interest. And <laughs> for for you, like, who are like three or just a couple of your your favorite, like, lesser-known Bills of all time? Like, what you know what I'm saying? Not your Jim Kelly or Thurman Thomas, but who's right. somebody Who's somebody that just – who are some people that just, like, you love and why? Who are those guys that are kind of your lesser-known guys? Well, um, one of them, um, my, the most recent one for me is Eric Wood. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you don't see Wood jerseys everywhere, you know what I mean? And uh, I played center uh, throughout high school. Oh, I didn't know that. That's yeah, good. that was my position. And uh, so I've always had a respect for the offensive line, uh, any position on the offensive line. You know, it's always a, a position that gets, you know, doesn't get much credit. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, same with like Kent Hall, you know. Um, oh, like, Kent Hall. He was so good. Yeah. yeah. I know. I mean, the, 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 and, and it goes back to when I, I chose the Bills. My dad wanted me to learn the position I was playing. So I learned the offensive line schemes and, and, you know, the pulling of the guard, what the tackle does, how a center and a guard work together to pick up linebackers. And so, um, you know, those, those two guys, I mean, they, they just, um, they've always been my, my secret, you know, like, man, I have so much respect for them. You know, I love the, the way they played the game. Um, you know, those, those two linemen, uh, have you, have you gotten to meet, um, Eric Wood? Uh, I've met Eric Wood. Yes, I met him at one of uh, Sal Capaccio's um, TV uh, radio shows that he he does in the during the week. So I, I did I did meet Eric Wood, but it wasn't on a personal. I mean, it was a quick signing. Um, I wasn't diagnosed or anything like that. Um, but again, to him, he he's reached out to me via Twitter, and you know, again, appreciate that to him, and it means a lot. Um, but not like since I've been diagnosed, have I been able to talk to him or anything like that? Well, I mean, he's, yeah, I mean, he seems like a really good guy. And, and man, that's a good one. Is, is there anyone else besides uh, Eric Wood, Kent Hall, you can think of? Um, you know, I would say Cornelius Bennett. But yeah, Cornelius yeah, no, Bennett, he was so good, yeah. He was he was so good, but he was under, you know, under Bruce Smith's, um, you know, shadow. You know, Bruce Smith dominated the defense back then, and, but Cornelius Bennett, I mean, he he was in every play, if you ask me. I mean, that's all I remember. And I don't know, for some reason, the name Cornelius always just stood out to me. And watching him play, making tackles, just being everywhere with Daryl Talley and Bruce Smith, you know, it was just like, man, this guy's good, you know. And, and I just loved watching him play. Um, so I, I'd have to say he beat my third one um, oh, that yeah. I enjoyed, enjoyed watching play. See, you're a real Bills fan. You you got the deep cuts over here. I mean, how many oh, yeah. how, how many how many people bring up Kent Hull? You know, not, Cornelius not Bennett. Many. Man, not I respect many. I respect that man. You're a real fan. I like that. Um, yeah. Here's a question for yeah. you. Do you do you have a favorite Bills Buffalo Bills memory? Like a favorite game? Is there one that stands out to you? Um, I've actually got two, and I'll be brief on each one. Sure. Um, the the first one is my first father and son trip, and that was last year in November uh, to Los Angeles to see him play the Chargers. You're talking uh, about a Panchito, is that his name? Uh, yeah, Panchito. Panchi- I love yeah. that. Panchi- you got yeah. Panchito and Panchita. That's, yeah, there you that's go. Awesome. <laughs> um, I I never thought I would be a dad, and when Panchito was born, I mean, it was such a blessing. And so, you know, one of the first things I always say is I can't wait to take a father and son trip you know, by ourselves, um, to our first Bills game. And, um, I took them to Los Angeles and it was just, you know, I had just got diagnosed. I, I postponed a lot of doctor visits and surgery to go with him on this trip. And it was just, it's, I mean, it's just one of, yeah, the Bills took a loss, but it's just so memorable to me that it was our first game together as a father and son. And, uh, we had such a good time, um, 
you know, just uh, I'll I'll never forget that. So I wish uh, it was a better game for you guys. Like, I, yeah, I I do too. <laughs> but, you know, my son was five years old at the time, and so he, you know, he. He, he was like, Dad, I still had a great time, even though the Bills lost. And, you know, we'll get him next time, Dad. And, you know, so it, it was it was just so, so memorable in that way that, you know, it was a father and son first time trip. And um, I, I just I, it brings me chills to, to even think about it. That's a special um, day. That's a special yeah, day. Yeah, it, it is. Um, and then what's funny is the other one too, it's another loss, but um, <laughs> when, uh, when my dad took me, when me and my dad went to the Monday night football game, when the bills hosted the Cowboys at, um, Ralph Wilson stadium, um, when we intercepted Tony Romo, like six times, six times, yes. And we lost. I couldn't believe that. I remember that game oh, so much. Gosh, man. Yeah, it was so bad. <laughs> um, I wasn't even poncho at the time, but I was wearing a mask and a poncho at the game. And um, I don't know, it was, it was it was just so cool that, you know, I was there with my dad and it was a Dallas Cowboys. He's a huge Cowboy fan. And I'll never forget what he told me at the end of the game is that he only enjoyed the last three seconds of that game. And, you know, it just it carried with me. And I was like, man, this, I'll never forget this game, even though we lost. I'll never forget it. Um, it's a... a just a memorable moment, you know, and it, it, again, it ties to my family and um, it's, they're just special moments, man, that I won't forget. It sounds like you have a, a pretty special family bond and family connection. I respect that. And that's awesome, yeah. man. And that's, that, that really speaks to Buffalo. I think, I mean, you're, you're really hitting all the notes, man. Um, you're kind of, again, you're kind of the perfect super fan for Buffalo, which is weird <laughs> being from Texas, you know, being but from uh, Texas, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, here's a question for you. This is a this is so I'm, now we're going to sort of play your uh, sort of uh, put on your general manager hat. Um, if you could influence general manager Brandon Bean, like what would you like to see the team do next year in terms of personnel? Is there anything you would recommend? Like if you could talk to Brandon and say, "Look, here's one change I want to see you make." What would you like to see him do? Oh man, <clears throat> that's a great question. Um, you know, he. I, I think they just gotta be. Um, I think they're gonna be uh, more, more aggressive on the free agent market, um, mm -hmm. especially on the on the right receivers. Um, you know, be. I mean, that. I'd ha I think that's what I want to say is, you know, just be more aggressive on the free agent market. Uh, bring in a better offensive, some linemen with experience. Um, there's gotta be some some linemen out there looking. You know. Yeah. Um, I think that's just been the the big problem offensive wise this year. Um, I mean, obviously we could see from this last week how much Josh had to run. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, timing. You know, not much time in the pocket. Um, Zay Jones is doing a good job. He's, I think he's he's emerging very well. Um, Do you Calvin like this Wyatt Wyatt Teller kid? To me, like I kind of like Teller and Dawkins, but the yeah. set the right side of the line, I'm like, you could replace every part of it, you know, to me. Right, right. The whole part of it, yeah. yeah. And then we just lost our, our center. I mean, I saw, I read today he had surgery today, so it's like, oh, gosh, here's another hit, you know. So now we got a, what is it, a backup center coming in? Well, we got Ryan Groy, who he was originally the starter at the beginning of the year, but he played so badly they brought Russell Bodine in to be the starter. Um, Art, and, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I agree. The offensive line, I hope they really address that in the draft. Maybe I, we can get a, a real road grader or something. Right. Um, actually, I mean, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather fix the offensive line first before we fix our wide receiver core. Agreed. Um, that, that would be the strong push. I mean, and I, I hate to even bring up Tom Brady, but if you look at his offensive line, the dude's never been touched. No, I mean, you're, you're right. You're totally... You're right. He it, never had great receivers, but his offensive line was always dynamite. Always dynamite. And he gets the balls to these receivers who have no name. You know, they, they make players and they make plays. And it's because he's got the time. He's, he's got, you know, um, the ability to look downfield. He's got the his receivers have time to make a route and get open. And I mean, that that's that's just how teams win. And I mean, you got to give them credit when it's due. I mean, they're, they're winning like that. And Tom Brady just keeps dominating. I can't wait till the guy retires. <laughs> but, um, I mean, really. And 
again, you never really hear of the offensive line from the Patriots, how well of a job they do. It's another position, another group of guys, you know, that, that are underrated in the NFL. Nobody really pays attention to them, but the Patriots offensive line is a perfect example of that. And, uh, you know, if we can get caliber guys like that, or just, you know, learn schemes that, you know, help protect even better. I mean, I think we'd be pretty good. So yeah. offensive line would be a huge push this off season is, is my, my thinking, man, you've got, I think you've got a good mind for uh, GM right there. I'm, I would back you entirely. Uh, uh, so one thing you've talked a lot about is how important the Buffalo Bills community has been to you. Um, I'm, and, you know, you talk about it in like a large scale. Uh, I'm curious, can you give us like a really small and specific example of someone like being like a really good community member or reaching out to you or helping you in some way? I mean, dude, I, I got to go with Del Reed. Everybody knows Del Reed. Um, you know, with 26 shirts, he made that Poncho Power shirt. Mm -hmm. for me this year and um i know i know it brought in a lot of money it it sure did and it, it's it's all for my medical expenses and i mean just the work that guy continues to do every single day um for the bills community and and buffalo community in itself i mean i i i give that guy much props i mean really it's 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 more than the bills mafia name to him now I mean, it's, it's, he's really established his name there and, and what he's done for me, I, mean, I don't know how I'll ever rethank him. Um, but I mean, just, uh, you know, that, that Poncho power shirt, just it's everywhere. I mean, I get pictures sent daily from different fans who, who have one and like, you know, Poncho power in at the China wall or in Germany or, you know, Poncho power at, you know, the white house or, uh, at the beach. <laughs> it's, I mean, really, these these people message me these pictures, you know, representing my Poncho Power shirt at, you know, at the baseball game, you know, at the World Series or, I mean, it's it's remarkable how many people bought this shirt and they wear it proudly and Dal, you know, had this, you know, envision like, hey, let's make a Poncho Power shirt. I think it'll do good and, you know, it'll help you and. I'm like, I'm all for it, you know, let's do it. And, you know, for him to reach out, you know, he didn't have to do that because, I mean, there's millions of shirt makers out there. Yeah. And for, for him to, you know, say, hey, I, I I, can get this shirt. I'm sure I could get this shirt sold in Buffalo for you. I mean, and it just blew up. And people still to this day message me asking me, where can I get a Poncho Power shirt? And I, I'm like, you know, they're done. They're, they're not making them anymore. You know, they were, li you know, the 26 shirts only does two weeks and every now and then they do a comeback, but, um, he's done a comeback like four times already because it's such a good seller. And, um, I was, you know, I was literally about to ask you that cause I did not know about this shirt. I'm actually looking at yeah. the, 20, the, the website right now and I am so, there. I'm so disappointed, but you raised, five hundred and forty six thousand dollars through these shirts that's amazing yeah, that's he's he's raised a lot i mean that's that's a lot of money that he's raised on selling shirts you know and i mean i just i i mean dude prop huge props to him on doing that i mean like i said i think it's more than the bills mafia name now for him it's it's more about you know he, he's like his own his own mafia leader and he, he's just doing good things and and every shirt is for somebody uh, benefits differently every two weeks from it is what's great. And it's, it's a lot of kids with cancer, mm -hmm. um, you know, people that are just in, you know, my same situation and, and they get a profit off of each shirt that's sold. And I think that's so cool. So he's sharing, you know, part of his profit with these with the community. And uh, I mean, man, he he's going to be blessed one day. I, I guarantee it for sure. Oh, I think he's already blessed with the what he's been able to do with the good the good things he's been able. To, in fact, I, I the the first thing I'm going to do after talking to you is I'm going to reach out to Reed and be like, uh, Del Reed, and be like, listen, sir, we need to make this uh, sellable again because I want to buy one, and I know there's a lot of Bills fans who would love there's to do that. A lot of Bills fans, yeah, and, and it's hard for me to ask him because I I did ask him one time to reopen it, 
And so, you know, I, I don't want to, I mean, it's his business and I don't want to, you know, intrude on that. And that's, he runs it how he wants to. And so, hey, if it comes back, I'm sure that people will buy it because it's a great shirt, great material, great print. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, like I said, it, it's, it's worldwide. I, I just got a picture today on my Facebook and it's a, a friend of mine who's wearing it in Germany. You know, she's like, I'm, I'm wearing your poncho shirt over here in Germany representing for you. So. I think it's so freaking cool. Yeah. Oh well, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna be talking to him, and if I can get him, if I can convince him, I will. Uh, I will let you know, sir. Um, here's a good question. I I have been thinking, and I I really want to do this. Um, because the Bills, you know, we got a lot of traditions and stuff. But you know, I was thinking, it wouldn't how cool would it be in Buffalo, New York, if you know, whenever we scored a touchdown or when, before we started a game. The fans shouted, chanted "Viva Los Bills," kind of uh, like how, kind of like how Minnesota says "Skull." Like, what do you think? Are, are we, should is this a good idea? Should we do this? Let's make it happen. Hey, I love it. I love it, man. You know, <laughs> you know what's funny is, um, obviously, you probably read when I spoke to the team mm-hmm. uh, right before the Jets game, and Coach McDermott let me call the, uh, you know, dismiss the the team meeting. And as people saw, you know, I went uh, one, two, three, Pancho Power, because that's that's the hashtag that everybody's following my story with, Pancho Power. Right. Um, and the first thing Harrison Phillips, which we've built a great relationship, me and Harrison. Uh, first thing he said, dude, what happened to Viva Los Bills, man? <laughs> that was the first thing he told me. And I was like, man, dude, I, I just, you know, Pancho Power sounded better breaking, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, it would be pretty cool, you know, if, if uh, Viva Los Bills started getting chanted at a game or something. I mean, that I mean, that would bring me to tears pretty big because, again, going back to my Hispanic background, uh, uh, you know, the word Viva, you know, everybody knows Viva Mexico and yeah, you know, it, it just and Los Bills, you know, I mean, that's that's the way us Hispanics relate to them sometimes. You know, yeah, you see Los Bills game, you know, and. Uh, man, that would just mean a lot, you know. It, I just think be, it would be intimidating, be awesome. you know. A bunch of a Buffalonians. Think about it. You can and you can hear the chant too, you know. You know, Viva, the, the, Viva, Viva. Los Bills, Viva yeah. Los, and you could just hear the crowd going. I mean, I'm telling you, it'd be great. And before, yeah. you know, as they're setting up to do a kickoff and they're chanting that, and it's getting louder and loud. Man, oh, that'd be awesome. And the bleachers, you know, people stomping on the bleachers as they're chanting it. Yes. And all- Oh, that'd be sick, man! Dude, that'd, that'd... dude, let's make this happen. I'm gonna work on it. I'm telling you, this is uh, this is <laughs> yeah. exciting to me. I think it'd be awesome, and um... it'd be very cool. Yeah. All right, we're coming you to. Might, the... You might give uh, you might give Dal another uh, idea with the Viva Los Bill shirt. <laughs> oh, see now that that's right? a great idea. I'll, I'll also talk to him about that. That's an awesome idea. Yeah. I'd buy I'd buy both shirts. They sound awesome. <laughs> uh, all right, we're getting to the home stretch real quick, but. You know, I saw in the interview that there are some like football leagues for kids starting in Mexico and stuff, or, uh, and and yeah. then one one of them seemed to have you as a mascot. Or, is that true? Um, Dude, I first and foremost, I appreciate you asking about that because I mean that that is that is where my heart is right now as far as um, contributing to you know any type of charity and um, or organization. Um, it, it's it's really at my heart. Um, so about three years ago, um, obviously I, you know, with social media, there's a, a team down in San Luis Potosí, Mexico, Mm -hmm. and they proudly wear the Buffalo logo on their helmets and how, I don't know. I mean, they just, they do. And there's other teams down there that wear some other NFL teams logos as well. But, uh, the coach reached out to me and, you know, said, Hey, you know, we look up to you. We love your outfit. We love who you are and stuff like that. And so as the season got closer to starting, I asked him, you know, Hey, you know, how's the season going to look for the kids this year? And he sadly told me that, um, a lot of parents pulled their kids out of the program because they couldn't simply afford it. And oh, bummer. I know. And so he said, yeah, we lost one of our age groups. Cause you know, in Pee Wee football, there's like seven to nine and then nine to 11 and then, 11 mm-hmm. to 13 or something like that so anyways they're losing one of their age groups because you know they they couldn't afford it um a lot of kids didn't want to play so I, I i just found it in me and i said hey you know let me see what i could do to help you and you know raise some funds you know and 
So I um, I got an Andre Reed uh, signed jersey and I mailed it to him. And I told him, here's what you got to do is you got to have a raffle, you know, charge, you know, three to five dollars per ticket and winner, the number you draw wins the jersey. And so they tried it when well, their first the first jersey raffle and take and remember, this is in deep Mexico where right. they get no they get no bills, things, no autographed memorabilia, things like that. And they raised close to two thousand dollars. And that's a lot of money in Mexico. That's um, awesome, man. It, it's quite a bit. So they were able to bring back a lot of the kids that were unable to afford to play. And I'm proud to say from then on, I've been sending them three to four packages a year of donated bills, used items. They they don't care what it is. If it's bills related, they'll take it. I mean, I have fans from everywhere just mail me used jerseys. Um, obviously, uh, people mail me things like caps and you know, things like that that may not fit me or something. And I, I send them down to Mexico and they appreciate everything. And they, they, um, they raffle it off and they raise money for the team. And now their championship team this year, they all got new uniforms. They got new practice, um, paddings. And, um, I mean, you name it, they've got, I mean, I, I can honestly say I've helped contribute and turn that organization around and um i'm proud of it uh, it's it's something that's real dear to me and um they were the should, bills logo probably. you should be proud of it ezra that's it's amazing to me that even in as you're dealing with all this stuff you're giving back to communities like that and that i mean everyone i've ever heard speak of you as a man like says you know this guy is, is a good guy like in terms of just you as a man and i, I gotta say i respect the hell out of that and um uh, man and it, it's it's so cool. And, and I talk to the coach maybe about once a week. He's always checking on me. And um, as a matter of fact, here in about the next two weeks, I'll be sending another package down there. Um, so, you know, I, I may I actually may give up my Sean McDermott mini helmet signed uh, to them. Uh, so they can raffle off because, you know, I mean, to me, it, it means more that they can raise more money than me having a, you know, a, a signed mini helmet. I mean, I'd rather have them have the money for the team and, um, you know, help them out. So, um, but you know, I, it's the, like the old Bible idea, you know, it's the idea of the more you give, the more you'll get. And like, I think right. that's, a, I, a, to me, like it, it's, a, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you got another one or three from Sean. Yeah, uh, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> I, you know, I, to, to them, it's a, it's a gem to me. It's like, Hey, I could probably get another one, you know? So it's, it's, it's no problem giving it up real easy. I mean, it's no hesitation. So, yeah. I'm well, real that's proud of them. Uh, you should be proud. And that's exciting, man. That's so cool. And like to bring, uh, I love the, the melding of the Mexican and American culture. That's so cool. We need more of that. And right. that's, that's really awesome. Um, last question for you, Ezra. And that, I've been taking up a lot of your time. Uh, but that's okay. for your wings, blue cheese or ranch, and why? Man. I'm going to get a lot of hate mail on this one. <laughs> oh, 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 no. But you got to remember, I'm from, I'm from, I'm from Texas. I'm from Texas. So it's got to, I got to go with the ranch, man. I got to go with the ranch. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got to go with the ranch. And only because I'm from Texas and we, you know, we barbecue, uh, barbecue and ranch just go well together. Mm -hmm. And, um, but don't get me wrong. I, there is some blue cheese um that i can eat wings with uh my favorite wing place in buffalo is almo's up by ub uh -huh. and i love their their blue cheese it's i don't know if they ho if they make it in house or what but i know it's not from a jar and it's so good so i, I could do both but you know when i'm down here watching the bills at the, at the bills bar here in dallas it's it's ranch man i gotta go with ranch <laughs> Hey, if it makes you feel better, don't tell anybody. But I, I also prefer ranch. So I, I'm with you on that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so. no, man, the ranch is, it's just more. It's more saucier. It's not as thick, and it just you know just drips. And I just oh, I don't know. And it tastes good too. So I, I'm with you. It's all about consistency, and that, that's yeah. and you can spoon it over, so you get good coverage. Exactly. You know? yeah. yeah, you can spoon it over. That's right. And the blue cheese is just a little too clumpy. You know, it can get mm. clumpy at times, and uh, so yeah, blue ranch for me. 
So. All right. Well, Ezra, listen, man, I, I got to tell you, this has been an absolute honor and a treat for me. And um, I'm so I'm going to transcribe this. Uh, and uh, I don't know how you would feel about I also would if I if I could get your permission, I would like to include um, audio, but we don't have to do that. I can just do the text. It's up to you. Um, oh, and whatever you got to do, you have I mean, you have permission for whatever you got audio, video, get pictures off my my social medias, whatever you got to do, anything's fine. I'm good with it. And is there anything you would like me to promote? Like in terms of like, uh, are there any GoFundMes or um, like, I know you had a GoFundMe for a while for, you, you know, your health costs. I don't know if there's still, if there's anything yeah, like that or, or, or still, this. Um, the GoFundMe still going. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, GoFundMe Pancho Power, um, two words. Uh, you can promote that. Um, okay. I mean, that that's always, it, trust me, it helps. And I know a lot of people always say, like, how does Pancho get to all these games and stuff like that? And it's like, I'm, I'm still working when I can, you know? Right. I, I mean, I got a paycheck coming in, you know? Um, sure. So the, that GoFundMe is specifically for medical expenses. So, uh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be awesome if you can promote that. Okay. Um, other than that, I mean, just, you know, you got my, my Twitter account and, I do have a Facebook and an Instagram, um, but I mean, other than that, you know, if um, I mean, geez, that that's pretty much it, you know. Um, okay. Well, I will definitely drop that in there, and you know, we are all we're with you, man, and like you know, it. we're we are you 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 we need you, man. Like we're we, we need you. <laughs> it's, it, you're hey. and honestly, you show up, and what happens? The Bills make the playoffs. I don't think that's coincidental, and you know, in terms of being popular. <laughs> That's a big deal. I know, right? Or they go two and zero. I was hoping they would have won this week because I've been like, man, they're three and zero since I talked to them. <laughs> well, that yeah. Well, but Josh Allen, man, he looked good. I mean, we uh, we should have won that one, but there was a know. there was a headline I saw that said that you know yeah we might have lost to the Dolphins, but the Dolphins know we we're gonna win in the long run because of Josh Allen. That was a Dolphins writer. Who wrote that? It was a was it it was a Dolphins writer who said yeah. that yeah and he said yeah the the Dolphins might have won but we really lost in the long run with their quarterback that they've got now you know yeah I was like dude you couldn't have said it any better than that I mean oh, yeah we're we're gonna be scary in a couple of years you know what maybe totally next year with that. <laughs> yeah so oh, man well Ezra I, I gotta say thank you again and I I, I appreciate you giving up so much of your time. And this has been a real treat for me, and I can't wait to get this out there. And I'll let you know on Sounds Twitter good. when I'm, I'm going to put this out. And if you think of anything else you want me to promote or want me to say, I'm happy to include that. And uh, But, man, you're, you're an inspiration to us all, and keep fighting. Keep us updated. We're all paying attention. And um, uh, you're, you, know, you represent the Bills right now. You are our guy, so you're, you you're the face of us, and uh, I'm happy for that. Thanks so much. All right, man. Well, listen, you have a great night, and uh, we'll be in touch soon, okay? Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, All buddy. Right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. Um, I hope that Pancho's words and his character, um, I don't know, maybe make you think this week. And, yeah, we're celebrating him for the home opener against Cincinnati. Um, but I think it's important to celebrate uh, people uh, like – Ezra, you know, every day and ask ourselves, you know, how we can be more like that and be more of an inspiration. Um, it's, it's certainly a inspiring uh, week, you know, looking ahead and, um, and it's sad. And, you know, I miss him. I know y'all miss him too. And, you know, uh, I'm very thankful that we had the chance to have you know, just a small part from him, you know, have him in our lives for just a little while. And he certainly is missed. And, uh, Pancho, we're, you know, we know where you are, sir. And, uh, up there and we love you and we miss you. And, uh, guys, let's, let's just remember this man and let's not easily forget him and what he gave us. Um, so Viva Los Bills and, uh, Let's show some poncho power, beat those bangles this weekend. Thanks for listening.